Before we get started, everyone doing good? Surviving? We're almost there. We're almost there. Before we get started, um, we're going to be talking about using Python at Nurse, but we have a little poll up. Everyone wants to contribute. And has two questions, so scroll. One question is, what language are you most proficient in using? And the other is, what programming language will you be using for your work at Nurse? So let's see if we have any variation in responses. We have 87% with Python in the 80s, fluctuating up. Most proficient using Python. Okay, and so we have we have about eighty six percent of people that are most proficient using Python, C plus plus, thirty one percent C fourteen, Fortran ninety nine, and Julia six. Nobody uses plus. What programming language will you be using for your work? Majority. Going to be using Python. In progress. A few people are, will be using uh, Fortran and C, C and MATLAB as well. Oh, and we did have 14% using MATLAB. Well, so tomorrow we'll be talking a, a lot about some of the other programming environments that we do have at NURSE. Um, our colleague Eric will be giving that talk. Uh, to get started today, we'll touch on using Python. And we'll go through half of this material and then pick up tomorrow with the rest. So what we're going to cover is just using Python at Nurse, the environment, best practices, tips, how you access Python modules and whatnot, and as well as tips for parallel computation with Python. Tomorrow we'll talk about Python with GPU. Scheduled program. So, a little bit about me. My name's Charles. You met me earlier. Uh, I've been at NURSE for a little over a year as a science engagement engineer, but I actually used NURSE in grad school. It was the first HPC computing center that I got access to, and back then, it was called Seaborg. It was an IBM Pentium 3 dual core processor, big stuff back then. Um, my research focuses on energy-aware computing, uh, performance modeling, and optimization. Uh, after finishing my PhD, I took a different route. Instead of, uh, instead of research, worked in industry um, and academia, lectured at Georgia Tech and Kennesaw State, um, co-founded two startups, and I've um, sort of served as a technical advisor for over a dozen startups throughout the country. Um, free time activities, I love mythology and astrology, um, loving about, love learning about different sciences, and um, I used to be a gymnast, I do gymnastics coaching and judging as well, and I love to travel. So, I'm a part of the user engagement group um, here at NURSE, and it's our group, so it's our, our job to just work with you in a collaborative manner, bring forth everything that you need to be successful, and accomplish your science, and make sure that you love NURSE and everything that we offer. And so for all of you Python users and enthusiasts, we have a lot to offer you here at NURSE. So we'll just be talking about some of the using Python and getting started very simply today. 
So using Python at NERSS, we're going to go through some hands-on activities tomorrow. So, you know, everyone is familiar. And at NERSS, we have Python available for you in our modules. And so you can simply just module load the Python. By default, it's going to load version 3.11. And you will then have access to the environment. Very simple and quick and easy for you to get access to. And so in using uh, Python at NURSE, you're going to use uh, Conda modules. And these basically provide you with a package management um, solution that you can use to create um, your, your application environment, make sure that things are isolated and reproducible for your packages, and easily allows for you to share what you're working on as well. And it also kind of protects our system. So once you load your Conda module, uh, it'll, it initializes, uh, it'll initialize Conda, so there's no need for you to uh, reload your uh, shell as well. So once you load uh, Conda, once you load Python, you can do a Conda list to see what all types of Conda packages and environments are already available for you to access by default. Um, at NURSE, we have a number of different uh, environments and packages that are already established and ready for you to use. So depending on what you'll be working on, and either you'll have access to it, and then we can, we'll also have show you how to create your own environment as well. So some options that you have for using um, Python and NURSE and other options, um, you can create your own custom common environments as well. So very simply, you just enter, enter the command once you're in Python, module load conda. You'll do your conda create as well. And then you can specify whatever type of uh, Python libraries that you'll need to be using as well. So once that has loaded, you'll get your confirmation and whatnot. And you can also use shifter with Python within a container. Um, and so with that, you will just use the shifter command and then you'll specify the image and the location that you want to create that container using your Python environment. So a few tips that we have for installing your packages. Do we have any questions before going on? Everyone's okay? Just a few commands. Okay, any questions in the chat? No answers. Okay, good. All right, so you're able to install and manage your, pack, your packages. It's rep, 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 recommended that you use Conda or GIF for installation. And so when you install these packages via Conda, they are gonna basically come in what we call kind of different channels. And so you can specify the type of channel that you want to create your environment in by uh, using the default, uh, the C flag, um, or specify keyword defaults, or you can specify the type of environment. Um, and again, you can just do on the list to see what some of those different options are. So specifically, when you're working with different Python packages, you want to keep in mind that in order for them to work properly on a large-scale supercomputing system, that we use different type of wrappers to make sure that you get the optimal usage on Perlmutter. So a lot of the um, regular Python commands, we have wrappers to make sure that they work more, most efficiently on a computer. Um, CUDA provides a uh, CUDA toolkit um, on our system that you can use for GPU-enabled Python packages. Uh, we'll be talking more about using GPU-enabled Python tomorrow, though, just as an FYI. Okay. Who is familiar with MPI? And full people. What about online? Do we have people that have used MPI before? There are only two raised hands. So three. Three. Um, so MPI for Pi is basically. Uh, parallel implementation for Python. So if you're going to be doing uh, simulations across multiple nodes, you will need to use 
MPI, if you're just going to be using it within a single node, um, you can do a, another version with just CUDA enabled in Python. So we provide the access to MPI 4Py or Python module. So you can just access that. It does come with the CUDA support. So once you have loaded that, uh, you'll have access to the MPitch environment as well. So you can load the module, um, the Python environment that you'll be using. Um, in this case, we can specify it to be the programming environment for new and CUDA toolkit. And then we can specify the other options that we, other packages and modules that we want to load as well. And then we can create our Conda environment. Uh, we can create and specify the name of that environment that we're going to use, as well as the version of Python that you want to use. And then you'll do a Conda activate on your environment. This is what will launch um, your environment for usage. So you want to keep in mind that with the CUDA aware MPI, that you want to you have to have the CUDA toolkit loaded for access, um, even for code that doesn't. Who will be using uh, MPI only for their work with Python, if you're using Python? Who's going to use MPI and CUDA with Python? Just Python? So no MPI? Yes, no? No? CUDA, though? Okay. All right, so we have different configurations and options that are available. If you do have questions or if you want to learn more about maybe learning how you could parallelize and use an MPI or CUDA or combining them, then you can set up a consultation with uh, one of the staff for assistance with that too. Okay, one thing that you want to keep in mind with uh, installing your packages is we recommend that or use caution when you do use PIP. Um, packages can be installed um, in your environment, but you want to make sure that um, you're careful with that ins installation because even using that specifying the user flag, it's not going to necessarily um, relegate it to your only uh, environment. So you want to make sure that you specify that all of your packages are defined using the keyboard Python user base that's set up in your home directory. Right. So some best pack practices for using pip. Um, use pip install and the user and then the package that you want. Um, you can also use the other command here where you do not cache the directory or you can force or reinstall. And so Python is easily scalable at NURSE uh, using MPI um, to scale it across hundreds of nodes. So what you want to make sure is that you appropriately have your appropriate startup and modules loaded, allow for appropriate time that may be needed. It's going to be loading across uh, a global shared file system. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we don't stress the system too much. So the constraints that you want to make sure that you use is make sure you use a container, um, use a global file system, and use the appropriate prefix options as well as those commands. And so example commands that we have here for easily uh, creating those environments, um, avoid directly creating them in your home directory DFS as well. So some other common pitfalls that you can have with Python is that you can have uh, too much parallelism or parallelism that is actually counter um, constructive. Um, so what this means is that you have uh, over that over subscription within the number of processes. So you want to make sure that you have an appropriate mix of the number of processes being used per node, as well as the number of open MP threads that are going to be. So you don't want to make sure that the multiple of those do not exceed the number of physical CPU cores that are available. Okay. So 
So tomorrow we'll go into detail with more uh, hands-on um, activities for using Python as well as using Python, Python on GPUs and best practices of jobs. Uh, so this is kind of a introduction and in getting started. Uh, does anyone have any questions so far? Eric, you want to take it away with the exercise? Uh, do we want to do our little quiz or do we not have time for that? Oh, do you have? I have another. Are you going to do that or was Eric, was Eric going to do that? Uh, I think Eric is going to do the walkthrough. Um, okay. You want to have... the quiz? I think this will be like five minutes, 10 minutes, maybe. Okay. Yeah. You can go ahead. Is that okay? I think it'll be fun. Just something to wake everyone up again since it's been a while. Um, okay, so we're going back to Menti. Uh, there we go. Okay, can everyone see this? The quiz? Um, oh, I don't know why it's not showing the QR code, but let me drop this in the chat. Oops. Okay, you can give me a thumbs up when you're in there. Okay, I see lots of people joining in. There we go, there's the QR code. Okay. All right, another 15 seconds to join us. Okay, all right. So let's get into it. So now we're going to test uh, your knowledge. This is not uh, actually graded in any way. Um, so just, uh, you know, good good way for us to keep track of, uh, you know, if we, we were able to clearly communicate some of this to you. Um, so this is kind of a, oops, why is it showing that already? Oops. Um, maybe you saw the answer already. Uh, approximately how many nurse users are there in thousands? Okay, so if you said 10, you were right. Uh, right now we have about 10,000 users. Um, but uh, yeah, so we support a lot of different people doing different things on our system. Uh, let's see. I don't know why it's showing the answers already. Um, approximately what percentage of our users are graduate students? <laughs> if she if she doesn't screen share, is, do we see it? Oh, wait, are we seeing the answers? Or? I don't see the answers. Uh, I think this is just like everyone's responses, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can you can. Go it was the, it was the, showing the answer. I don't really know why it's doing that though. But it, um, it pops up. Yeah, it like popped up. Oh, okay. okay, just don't look. <laughs> 
<laughs> Give me a second to clear it. I don't know why that is. This is actually my first time using this. So. Okay, yeah, the answer is 32, about 32%. So I, it's actually kind of like a minority majority. So it's the biggest group of users that we have. Um, but there's a lot of different people using our systems. Okay, all right. So let's see if I can... Okay, good, it's not showing. Um, approximately how many publications acknowledge NERSC resources every year? <laughs> okay, yes, about 2,500 actually, it's a lot. So make sure that when you, um, uh, are using our system. And if you publish something, make sure to acknowledge us so that we know that you, um, you know, got something good out of our system and we can uh, celebrate your great work. Um, oh, geez, I don't know. Mentee is kind of weird that way. All right, there we go. <laughs> Apparently it's going to keep track of points now. I told it not to. Oh no. Um, all right, let's see. Let's see what it does. So how many GPUs does one Perlmutter GPU now have? Okay. Yes, it has four. So each GPU node has four GPUs on it. Which storage system is considered local? I mean, it's, it's connected directly to Perlmutter. Right. Yes. So Scratch is the one that is sort of directly connected into Perlmutter. The rest of them are mounted on Perlmutter, but they're um, not local in the same way that Scratch is. What is the operating system on Perlmutter? Right. Yeah, that'd be weird, crazy if it was iOS. That'd be interesting. Uh, yes, it is a it's a type of Linux. Okay. Oh. Who answers the help ticket center? Yeah. Oh, option four is. <laughs> I'm giving away the answer. Something else entirely. <laughs> I know someone's going to pick option four. Mm -hmm. Yay, excellent. That's right. Nurse staff, we do answer them and we will help you as best we can.
All right, true or false? I should run big data intensive jobs from my home directory. This from a login note from a login note from my home directory. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, we haven't talked about login notes quite yet. So. Oh, okay. Sorry. No, that's okay. Okay. Yes, that's right. False. Um, don't do this. Uh, and it's also okay if you didn't know the answer. That would have been fine as well. <laughs> Okay, what is the name of the file system that is best suited for active computation? This you have to type it in yourself. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So the answer, the best answer is Scratch. So a lot of you wrote that. CFS is okay. Uh, common is for reading in uh, certain libraries and um, uh, software, but you want to, um, in terms of file system, you want to be putting things in Scratch. Memory is not considered a file system. It's it's part of the node. It's not a file system, but um, you're right. If you could have everything in your memory, that would be amazing. <laughs> but your, your data is gonna be stored in Scratch. All right, what is the package manager that Nurse recommends for Python use on our system? What is it called? Okay, yes, the answer is Conda. That's right, we heard a little bit about it today and we'll probably hear more about it later. And just because I don't know is correct. Uh, let's skip that one because that will take <laughs> Okay, thank you everybody.